I have a word for every generation that is here. God is going to speak to all of us. Hallelujah. So, Father, we magnify you. We thank you for your precious glory that resides in this house, in this temple. We thank you, God. I thank you for my favorite preacher, my mother, the general, who preached an unbelievable, powerful word last night. Are you mantling in the right mind today? How many people in here is mantle in the right mind? Come on, let me hear you. Come on, come on, open your mouths. If you are mantle in your right mind, let me hear you. We give honor to the general, Mother May do praise and honor. We give honor to my lovely wife, Prophetess Janice, Apostle Nadine, we honor you. Pastor Lady Sergeant, we honor you. Dr. Sheena Brown, we honor you. Pastor Lady Williams, we honor you. My sister, Pastor Chanel, we honor you. My sister, Minister Pittman, we honor you. My brother, Apostle Vanell, honor you. Dr. Keyshawn, we honor you. Hallelujah. All the gifts that's in this place, we honor you. And to every believer that is here, you are honored. Hallelujah. There were no big eyes and little U's in the kingdom of God. Just different assignments. I want you to, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37. We're going to read verse 1 through the 10th verse. Say this with me. Say convergence of wisdom and strength. Say it one more time. Say a convergence of wisdom and strength. Hallelujah. The hand of the Lord came upon me, brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. Indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, suddenly a rattling. The bones came together bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinew and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man. Say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet and exceedingly great army say convergence of strength and wisdom amen last night Apostle Wilson said something that made me chuckle he said people that is from Brooklyn and the Bronx <laughs> they love to let you know that they're from the Brooklyn and the Bronx and it is very true. It is very true. I chuckled because when God gave me the word of the Lord for tonight, he told me he wanted me to give a story that happened in 1993. Me growing up in Coney Island in Brooklyn. <laughs> and it's a Brooklyn and Queens story. I was 16 years old. And there was this rap group out of Queens called Onyx. And Onyx had this song called 
throw your guns in the air. In the rap video, they would wear army fatigue. And they would basically glorify a gangster street lifestyle. At that particular time, army fatigue was what a lot of street people would wear all throughout the barrows. They would wear army fatigue. Myself, I would wear Tommy Hilfiger shirt or Tommy Hilfiger sweater. And I would wear army fatigue pants. Reason being, the logic behind it was I was showing that I am not a thug. I'm going somewhere in life. However, the fatigue is letting you know, don't get it twisted. I'm still cut from this cloth. <laughs> 16 years old, I'm in a house party. Coney Allen. And this song comes on. Throw your guns in the air. And any gun that you could think about was raised in the air. And I sat there puzzled. How did they get all of these guns? It was people in their teenagers, people in their 20s, people in their 30s, people in their 40s. And they all had their guns in the air. And they was letting you know that these different generations, we are being raised up by the enemy to bring death to a community. I'm here to let you know, people of God, the devil does not wait till you bring your children to church to reach them. He is not waiting till you bring your children to the revival. And there was one person by the name of Kwani. Kwani was 12 years old, people of God, and Kwani, he would have his fatigue on, and he was the one that they would give the gun to when, we, when they went to parties. The reason being, because he would be the least likely to be checked with the gun. So you had people 30 years old giving this 12-year-old boy a gun because they was training him up in a way he shouldn't go. So when the word of God lets us know to train up a child in the way, people of God, it is because what the enemy has planned for your children, hallelujah, he does not wait for you to bring them to a satanic temple because he know you never will. But the enemy will come to your household. He will reach your children in the schools. In the school system right now, you cannot even tell parents if their child is going in an alternative lifestyle. You can't even tell the parents no longer. So the enemy has an agenda for generations. He does not wait to indoctrinate a generation when they are ready. But people of God, the reason that you should bring your children to church and not leave them home and come here dancing is because while you are in church at the revival, people of God, Disney is training your child in witchcraft and deception. Rap music is making these boys put on hoodies and shoot people because of a neighborhood. Instagram is teaching your daughters to twerk as if all they have to offer a generation is their bodies. I'm here to tell you that you have so much more to offer. God has called you to be creatives. He has called you to be innovative in this hour. He has put talents in you. He has given you smarts. People of God, he has chosen you in this season. And the enemy is very shrewd because he doesn't even wait until you are born to try to destroy you. Right now at the DNC convention, they have Molech worship that they have set up to destroy your generations so people of God understand the assignment why you are picking people and political parties to put them in office the enemy is trying to destroy your generations hallelujah you're gonna have to excuse me hallelujah they're coming after your babies to offer them the Molech. They want them to walk through the fire, but not on our watch. Because God has commissioned an end time people, an end time army, 
to walk your children through revival fire. Is there anybody in this generation that is hungry to see real revival? Hallelujah. Is there anybody in this generation that wants to see a revival that doesn't end? Is there anybody in this generation, people of God, that want to embrace the spirit of revival? Hallelujah. Where God takes over a generation and that generation spills out into the different spheres of society. And you begin to see social change. You begin to see change in your neighborhoods. You begin to see change in your in society. People of God, God is looking for a people that will cry out to him. I cannot prophesy you into revival you have to be hungry for it hallelujah Daniel and the Hebrew boys I'm just want to talk to you for a minute and then we'll get into preaching Daniel and the Hebrew boys it was teenagers in captivity and everybody bowed down to a Babylonian system they chose to make a stand in their generation Daniel was 70 when he was about when he was thrown into the lion's den and he started ministering as a teenager. He still was moving and shaking at 70 years old. There is a spirit in the land upon the younger generation where they want the older generation to pass the mantle and sit down. No, you go sit down somewhere, people of God. You have to learn honor because mantles fall upon transition, not retirement. Mantles fall upon transition, not retirement. And God says in this hour, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lose a convergence of the young and the old. A convergence of wisdom and strength. Young people, you are strong, but you need apostolic wisdom. Hallelujah. Yes, you're strong, but you need the wisdom of the sages of this age. You need the wisdom of those that have went before you because there is a substance that they carry that this generation needs needs Hallelujah. so convergence the young and old wisdom and strength young people you are strong but you need apostolic wisdom Jeremiah was 21 when God called him to be a prophet Josiah was eight years old sitting on the throne of Judah David sat on the throne at 30 Jesus started his ministry at 30 years old the apostles uh-oh was younger than him, which means they was in their 20s. That's a different topic for another day. You don't have an excuse not to emerge for God. You don't have an excuse uh, for the glory of God to sit upon your life uh, and God begin to infuse you with understanding uh, and strategies uh, for your generation. Uh, you don't have an excuse to sit on God uh, when God has set a mantle uh, upon you uh, and has put you in your right mind. Uh, our city does not need Kamala or Trump. Uh, our city needs burning ones. Uh, our city needs intercessors. Uh, our city it is the prophets that's going to prophesy to their city. Our city needs watchmen. Our city needs those that will say, Lord, send me. I have an Isaiah cry in my belly. If you want to use somebody, you can send me. God is looking for burning ones. Let's say, God is looking for burning ones. And guess what? When you burn, you don't look for a microphone. <laughs> when you burn, you don't look for a platform. People of God, when you burn, you take the fire that's in your life wherever you go. Hallelujah. If you can walk past a company of people that you know don't serve God and not tell them about your Jesus, you are not burning. You're waiting to be seen in front of people. Hallelujah. God is looking for burning ones that's going to burn for him. 
Hallelujah. All of those that you see, all of those that have packed out arenas, they didn't start there. They started in their neighborhoods. People of God, some of the great generals of all, they started with tracks in their hand. I know you're too big to give out tracks. Then you're too big to go into an arena because it starts, glory to God, it starts with service. Hallelujah. Not celebrityism. Revival, revival, hallelujah, revival. God is looking for those that will say, God send me. I will sell out. I will consecrate myself. I will pay the price, not pay the price for a blue check on social media to be verified by people that can care less about you, but pay the price to be verified in heaven. Paying for blue checks. What in the world is that? Hallelujah. To be verified by men. What is that going to do when a demon rises up? Does that check have power to cast a demon out? Does that check have power to get someone saved? That check doesn't have enough power to heal a call. But God is raising up a new breed that's going to sell out to say things have been too dry in these institutions and God wants to reign again upon the entire body of Christ. He doesn't just want remnants here and there, but he wants an entire church that will sell out to him. Hallelujah. Spend Bahabahosia. Pay the price. And, and paying the price is just not for preachers. It's for sonship. Those that would embrace being sons of God. The Bible says that believers shall lay hands on the sick and see them recover. It was Brother Cornelius that got a vision from God. It was Brother Ananias that laid hands on Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. It was a deacon that transferred from one place to another place. It was Deacon Stephen. Hallelujah. That was preaching and miracles was taking place. Do you see how low the church we have become? People of God in the days of Acts, the believers, the plumbers, hallelujah, anybody was walking in the power of God. It wasn't about just the pulpit, because the pulpit, people of God, the five-fold ministry, they equip the saints so that the saints work the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. So here we go, people of God. It is believed Ezekiel was about 30 years old, the minimum age for priests under the law. 592 B.C., Ezekiel was exiled to Babylon. Exile means captivity, means banishment. While in captivity, the Bible says that the heavens was open and he saw visions of God. This priest turned prophet is in bondage in Babylon. However, the heavens was open. Some of you in here now, you are in bondage to porn, fornication, drugs, same gender loving, social media, lack to the wrong crowd. But just like Ezekiel saw a vision of the heavens open, you are here because of a vision. And the heavens is opened in this place. No bondage, no sin, no devil can stop the plans that God has ordained for every single generation that is sitting in here because of an open heaven and because God chose to give somebody a vision. Some of you are prophets in bondage, been there. Some of you are believers in bondage. Some of you are minstrels in bondage. Some of you are singers in bondage. Your gift is activating 
thing, but it's activating in bondage. That's why you need a seer like Apostle Wilson that you, you can't talk to people about your bondage. So God has created an arena where he would open up the heavens. Hallelujah! To revive the city just so that the bondages that you can't talk about, you can come and lay them at the altar and receive deliverance this weekend. Hallelujah. You can lay every bondage at the altar this weekend. That's why you've been mantled in your right mind. Now, you know this particular story. If you are a student of scripture, definitely if you're a student of Dr. Wilson, then you know this particular story has nothing to do with the church. However, it is prophetic to the kingdom of God. The vision of the dry bones. God, he's assuring the Israelites that although they may feel spiritually and emotionally dead, he has the power to breathe life and hope to a seamlessly hopeless situation. It's a betrayal of the nation's restoration and return from exile. It symbolizes the resurrection of the Israelite people, both spiritually and physically. It points to one day Israel's eyes being opened, coming under the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. It points to the establishment of the kingdom reign of the Messiah, Jerusalem, as the capital. All displaced Jews coming back to Israel from amongst the nations. It pointed to 1948 when Israel was declared a Jewish state. But now how does that story prophetically speak to us 2024? Ezekiel in a vision is put in a valley of dry bones. The bones is bones is the structure that holds up the body. So when you see bones that means there is no longer a body. If God gave the word of the Lord, can these bones live? This is God saying, I have a structure, but I don't have a body. So what is he saying to our day? Does God have structures and organizations? But he's asking, where is his body? Is she sectioned off into different denominations? Is she sectioned off into different tribes? Is she sectioned off into different groups that don't deal with each other? Where is the body today? Ezekiel is not just seeing bones. He's seeing very dry bones. And God asks a question. Can these bones live? Ezekiel just turned from priest to prophet. So he might not know the authority that God had just put in his mouth. Mm -hmm. He may not know the authority that God put in his mouth to speak to the convergence of the old and the new. He may not know the authority that God put in his mouth to speak to different generations that, he, that God will now breathe upon. Hallelujah. In the dominion mandate, people of God, God gave man dominion over the earth and he has never taken it back. That's why when God wills to do something in the earth, he needs a vessel. That's why when demons want to do something in the earth, disembodied spirits, uh, they need a vessel. Because God has given the earth to man. God, like the woman of God said, he partners with man in the earth. It, was, it would have been easy for God to bring Israel out of Egypt, uh, but he, rose, uh, he, he raised up Moses to do it because God partners with man. Understand something, people of God, when he said, son of man can these bones live he wanted to blow Ezekiel's mind as well as speak prophetically to what God wanted to do in the future some of you are wondering why God hasn't intervened in your situation yet your faith is too low your situation is not dire enough 
The bones aren't dry enough yet. Hallelujah. It's not dark enough. You and your prayer partner may still get the credit. Hallelujah. Lazarus, you've been in the grave for one day. I'm not coming. I'm still sitting here. Two days. It's not dark enough yet. Three days. Rigor mortis is finally getting getting to where I needed to be four days and then God shows up on the scene because it wasn't humanly possible for man to raise Lazarus up after four days it wasn't humanly possible for him to come out of the grave without there being a divine intervention some of you you want God to bring you into another place but God is saying I have to let your situation I have to let it get dire I'm going to sit down and I'm going to watch to see if you're going to hold on to faith and then you're going to see me move in your situation but I'm telling you your situation is not dire enough for the matured place that God is trying to bring you to how can you believe God for millions and billions of dollars and you're crying over the thousand hallelujah when someone has died, we say it's over, yet there's still a body. What happens when all of the body has withered away and there's nothing but bones? God was showing the prophet that these bones may be dead in an open valley, but what's that to a prophet and a prophetic people under an open heaven? The devil thought that he had Jesus in the tomb, not understanding that the tomb was really a womb. You have to understand, people of God, just like the woman of God said last night, it could have been the end for the man in the tomb, but it was just the beginning of something new. God, hallelujah, was bringing him through a process so that he could change 10 cities. You have to change your perspective because what you're thinking is a tomb may just be a womb where God is birthing you into something new. God is trying to show Ezekiel that he is the omnipotent God. He tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. He didn't tell him to prophesy to the body of Christ, our assignment, because that's too easy. This assignment for you, Ezekiel, is different. Because you're going to prophesy to what was. You're going to prophesy to generations that don't exist no more. Oh, hallelujah. You're going to prophesy to bones. Oh, move. Hallelujah. Generations that don't exist no more. He is not talking to baby boomers. He is not talking to Generation X. He is not talking to millennials and Generation Z and Generation Alpha. That is in the earth he is prophesying to generations of what was he is prophesying to generations of bones to hear the word of the Lord because everything in the atmosphere has ears speak to the mountain they have ears speak to the wind they have ears hallelujah what is God telling you to speak to that you are intimidated by Speak to these bones. They have ears. Bones are about to experience revival. Bones are about to experience restoration. Different generations of bones are about to connect. But you doubt when God gives you the word of the Lord. You say, I'm too old. I'm too timid. I'm too young. I have church hurt. God has given you no excuse tonight. Because if bones can rise up and become a great army, you have I have no excuse. God has given you no excuse to turn this city upside down. God has given you no excuse to be used by him to get in prayer and to get filled with his anointing and to get baptized by the glory of God. Hallelujah. You have no excuse. If God can speak to centuries old bones and cause a revival you have no excuse 
you have your body. You have your senses. You are a living being. You are spirit filled. You have churches. You have pastors. You have leaders. And you have the word of God. These bones have no life. They have no hope. They have no existence. Yet at the word of the Lord, they became a great army. I'm here to tell you. Hallelujah. God reviving us. That's an easy thing for heaven. God raising us up. That's an easy thing for heaven. But what about it was something that doesn't exist and God Cause it causes it into being. When he prophesied to these bones, the Bible says that there was a noise. Suddenly a rattling. Bones came together. But there was no breath. This is one of the reasons that we don't see revival in our modern day church. Because we're concerned about the wrong things. He prophesied to the bones. And as you know, we are prophesying. We're prophesying to structures, organizations, people, churches, buildings. Said so there, check. There was a noise. The church is making a lot of noise. Check. There was a rattling. It's a lot of dancing, a lot of shouting. It's going on. Check. Bone came together bone to bone we come together for a lot of conferences meetings gatherings we come together but we are concerned about the wrong thing because we're concerned about all of that not realizing the breath the spirit has put his finger up in a lot of these institutions and have walked out while people are dancing, while people are shouting, while they're preaching, grabbing their ear, while they're shaking the microphone, while they're running around the churches. The Spirit of God has put his hand up because we won't center back into prophesying to the breath, to the ruach, saying, Spirit of God, we need you. We don't need the shaking. We don't need the noise. We don't need the rattling. But what we do need is the breath of God to shake us again. What we do need is the Ruach to be released upon a new generation that has despised the wisdom of God. We need the glory of God that is only God breathed upon the church. We need to breathe again with his breath. Son of man, can these bones live? He answered, oh Lord God, you know, right? Young prophet, right Ezekiel? You don't get no that the reason that I call you son of man is because you don't yet realize that you're a son of God. You're still at the son of man stage. I'm going to change everything about you, Ezekiel, and put my authority that you're thinking that only I have, I'm going to put it in you. You don't realize that you're a son of God and my authority is upon your life. God wanted to see if Ezekiel understood that God can do anything. He uses man to fulfill his purposes. God can do everything, but he won't do everything. God can do anything, but he won't do everything. He uses man to fulfill the purposes of the kingdom of God in the earth. Again, how does all of this relate to us tonight? Prophetic people hear me. This is where I'm coming to all night. God has documented in 592 B.C. before Christ, before the church, how he is going to revive bones that don't lo no longer exist. And the completion goes into the millennial reign. So he's talking to prophet Ezekiel before the church age, as well as he's prophesying past the church age. Why? Why is there no biblical documentation 
of all the revivals that the church has been through, all the renewals, all the awakenings, we do not see documentation in Scripture. But God is talking about the revival of bones in Scripture, in scripture as well as he's talking about something that goes into the millennial reign. Why? Because revival for a living church is too easy for God. If before the Spirit is even poured out on believers in the Old Testament, God can have a prophet in a vision speak to bones, eyes, ears, legs, ligaments, brain, organs, come together, DNA that's no longer here can come together and reappear and awaken and God can revive a generation that no longer exists. How much more for four living generations crying out for revival that has their breath, that speaks in tongues, that congregates and have church. God is saying to us, revival for the church is too easy. I just need a hungry people to do that. need you to get hungry. You do know God does never just release revival in the earth. It is the hungry people that cry out to him. That call on the heavens for rain. Show me a revival where there wasn't praying people and I will stop preaching. Show me one where it wasn't people that called on God. So God, through this story, is showing us there's people, there's generations crying out for revival, and I am too. I'm crying out for a people that will pray again. I'm crying out for a people that will call on me again. I'm crying out for a people that can care less about the show. I'm crying out for a people that will get on their knees in their homes and call on me and call on real revival. One could chase a thousand, two could put ten thousand to fight. Put down the competition, put down, hallelujah, the names, and let's just come together and pray. The reason we won't see revival is because we're, we're bones, we're too disconnected. We only care about our own ministry, my own prophecies. I'm no glory carrier of this hour. Sit down. There are whole nations that have never heard the word of God because we're too busy preaching to each other all the time in America. I'm not going to get no glory by going to those poor nations preaching to them. They can't give me $70,000 to come. Revival. God revives the hungry. It's too easy for him to release it, release it in any generation that will cry out to him. Revival, hear me, is not up to God. It is up to the hungry. In any generation, God move the mountain. No, you speak to it, church. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he comes alongside to do what? To help. Jesus said it's finished on the cross. I birthed the church out now. I'm helping you. I'm not doing it. I'm going to partner with you. Hallelujah. I'm going to partner with a generation that's going to seek after me. I'm going to partner with a generation that will call on my name. You call on me and I will answer. Hallelujah. You call on me and I will answer. There's a cry for the hungry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is not stunting people of God. These people that just want their names and lights. Won't serve. Won't serve in the kingdom. Won't do things on the backside of the desert. But you want to be highlighted in the front. God is not into your agenda. He's into his own agenda. A hungry people. Paraclete comes alongside to help. 
God is going to converge the old and the young, the wise and the strong. 2 Kings 13, 20 and 21, they put a body in the tomb of Elisha. When the body touched the bones of Elisha, he revived. When a man from that current generation, <laughs> when he came into contact of the bones of Elisha, he stood up and revived on his feet. The residue of what was the weight on the older generation, the consecration on the former that had real power what God was able to revive the current generation. There was a convergence of bones that carry weight. Elisha is not even in the earth no more. But his bones carried so much weight it was able to revive a generation. Some of you despising those of old. Do you understand what they carry? Hallelujah. Do you understand the glory that's on their life? This milk stuff in this hour is not going to do. This milk generation is not going to do. You need the substance and the meat of God to bring transformation in this day. This day? That has no identity on it. This day you need weight. You need substance. You need the wisdom of all. God is going to cause a convergence of wisdom and strength. Hallelujah. There's a convergence going on. There was convergence of the young and old. The former and the latter. Hallelujah. God has something about bringing a revival of what was and doing a new thing. Matthew 27, and I'm done. 52 and 53, the Bible says, And the graves was open. Many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves, they went into the city and appeared to many. Bones went to the city. Skeletons went into the city and appeared to many. Different generations of the saints, bones of the saints, appearing to many. And these bones were revived. All the generation that's in here, whatever generation you're from, and you're, and you're saying it's over. My time is up. If God can revive and begin to go throughout the city, if bones making an appearance, I'm not stunting your aches and pains. God is showing you you can start over. If you're down to bare bones, God can revive you. And use you in this season. Retirement. I don't see that word in scripture. Sorry. Younger generation. God is maturing you. Letting you know. That you could speak to mountains. You could prostrate to your feet. You could prophesy. To the wind. You can be water walkers. In this generation. There's nothing that you cannot accomplish by selling out to God and getting under wisdom. No more bondage, hallelujah, of an old day when God is calling you to walk in a new day. God said to me in this season, as I turn and loose the spirit of Malachi in the earth. Turning the fathers to sons and sons to fathers. Hallelujah. I'll give you one last testimony and then we're going to pray. I never had my natural father in my life. I met him for the first time at 14 years old. 
And then when I seen that he didn't really have a desire for a relationship, I stopped pursuing it because I didn't feel it was my duty to pursue a relationship with the man that conceived me. About two, three weeks ago, I received a DM from someone saying, are you the son of Diane Neesmith? And I said, yes. He said, I've been sent to you from Anthony Munjin. My eyes popped open. I said, wait a minute. This man must have left me some money. <laughs> wow, he left me some money or something? So she says, can I give you a call? She called me and she said, um, he's been looking for you. I said, he's been looking for me. I've been here all along. I don't, you know. So I begin to tell her that my story with him. And she says, everything you said is true. She said, can I have him call you? I said, yes, you can have him call me. So my father at 85, 85 or 83, 83, okay. 83 years old, he calls me. He says, everything that you said was true except one thing. The last time you saw me was not when you was 14. He says, you don't remember you was working at Bloomingdale's and you was about to become a correction officer. And he says, I told them all, I don't remember any of that. The more of this story is this. He began to say, I have friends in the corrections office and I've been looking for you for years. And they said that nobody by the name of Dion Neesmith works here. So I realized that, wait a minute. I never took that job for various reasons. So he must be right. So here it is while I was going on with my life. My father was looking for me. And God says to tell everybody in here. Hallelujah. You have been going on with life. Some of you have made your own decisions of what you want to do. Some of you have turned your back on the call of God. And I know it's in here because the Lord told me it is. But your spiritual father is looking for you. And he has a great destiny for you if you would open up your arms and receive the love, the compassion, the mantle that God has ordained for your life in this season. The Father is looking for you. There's some of you that is so broken in your heart from past situations, rejections, pains that God wants to mend in this season, in this hour. But are you hungry enough to let God empower you, raise you up, and use you for his glory? Hallelujah. There is a destiny for every person that is born in the world. There is an anointing that God has for every person that is born in the world. The anointing may not be to be used by, behind a pulpit. It may be to be used in a marketplace. But there is a grace that the Father has for you. I want all of the babies, the young people, to come to this altar. And I want the older generation, the wise, to stand behind them. That's what God showed me. He showed me the younger generation crying out to God on this altar. Because there's something that God desires to birth, to shape, to shift in your life. There is a prophetic generation that God is going to raise up. Hallelujah.